Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. In my last video about heating, I told you about the most popular sources of fuel. We discussed their cost, even worked out a rating, starting with the most expensive and ending with the cheapest and the most convenient. So, today we're going to go further with the heating sources study. First, what water temperature is required for each of major fish species farmed in RAS? We're going to consider heating units options, how to properly heat the water, how to properly heat the air. Make sure you watch this video to the end, because we're going to consider not only the basic ways to heat a fish farm, but to calculate the cost of heating at a sturgeon farm with the capacity of 10 tons of grout fish per year, depending on the heating source. We will do all that in regards to all eight sources that we talked about in the previous video. So, let's go! Well, let's start with what temperature is required to farm the major fish species in RAS. And of course, we start with sturgeons, our favorites. For sturgeons, at this fish that winters under the ice, any temperature from 0 degrees to 26-30 degrees Celsius is the temperature within which they can exist. But the optimal temperature for growing sturgeons in RAS, at which you can reach their maximum growth parameters, or rather the minimum feeding coefficients, is 22-24 degrees. So, keep sturgeon in RAS at 22-24 degrees, and you will get the best growth parameters which are only possible for this fish. Of course, low temperature is also possible, but the growth rates will worsen, and in higher temperature range, the fish starts to eat worse, the fish feels uncomfortable, and at some points even dies from too high temperature. Trout Trout also lives at temperature range from 0 to 20 degrees, sometimes even up to 23-25 degrees in various open water sources. But since we're not interested in indicating the temperature which is enough for fish existence, but the optimum farming temperature is 15-17 degrees. This is the temperature at which trout is grown at all RAS farms, because at 15-17, trout gives the best growth rates. African catfish It's an interesting fish in general. It's a tropical fish. I used to think it couldn't be killed by anything at all, but now it can. The only thing that can kill the African catfish, despite the fact that it's a super tolerant fish, it's temperature. Only cold water can cause problems for the African catfish. So, of course, you should not lower the temperature of the water in RAS below 20 degrees Celsius, otherwise the catfish begins to get sick and die. But optimally, keep the temperature at 26-28 degrees for this fish to grow as efficiently as possible. Whitefish The temperature needed for farming whitefish is similar to that for growing trout. The optimum is 15-17 degrees for fry and grow out fish. Crayfish What kind of crayfish are we talking about now? Of course, many of you know the one which lives in open water bodies of the southern latitudes. But since we're talking with you about the conditions of farming it in RAS, in RAS another kind of crayfish is usually farmed. It's Australian red clawed crayfish. This is a more tropical species which requires an optimum temperature of 26-28 degrees Celsius. Shrimp now we will talk about the two species of shrimp that are most popular for farming in RAS, the Vaname and the Rosenbaggy. The two types of shrimp, one of which is brackish water shrimp, the Vaname one, while the Rosenbaggy shrimp is the fresh water shrimp. They are a little bit different in their optimal growth parameters, but in general the temperature range of 23-28 degrees is the optimum temperature for both shrimp types. Of course, there is a huge number of fish species, carp, tilapia, and so on. But in fact, we cannot cover all of them within one video, so I selected only the most popular for rice farming. Now let's talk about heating units. I have already underlined what water temperature should be maintained for each type of fish. What is next? Well, let's start with the fact that there are three major types of RAS farm heating, and the first type is air heating. I guess everybody knows very well what air heating is. It's indispensable in each and every house, in every apartment, in any case in northern countries. And let's take a closer look at the heaters that are used at RAS farms and for heating the air. And surely the first are radiators. 
Of course, the same radiators that are installed in your apartments and houses. You can heat your ass farm with the use of radiators. It's actually a classic way. You install radiators along the facility walls, under the windows, if there are any windows, of course, because in general, usually there are no windows at rest farms. Nevertheless, radiators can easily heat the air inside the building. All is well, but whether it's ideal, optimal or not, I say honestly, most likely not. The advantages of radiators are, of course, that they are easy to buy, widely known, everyone knows how the principle of their operation. But they have significant disadvantages, which are that firstly, you need to install them all over the facility, and it's quite a large number of radiators, a large number of connections. This is not very convenient. Secondly, you need to manually jet the parameters of the radiators. To be honest, I have not seen radiators that automatically set their own temperature through a circulating pump and some sensors. Probably it can be done, but in practice I have not come across that. All the radiators are tweaked, adjust manually in order to set the optimum temperature. And to be honest, this is not very convenient. Well, and of course, they are not the most effective means of heating. I will tell you why. Because in case of using radiators, the floors will still be cold. There is no underfloor heating. It's quite logical and normal that radiators heat only air. But nevertheless, the effectiveness is not very high. So the second heating option I want to talk about is underfloor heating. In fact, I specifically included them in my section. Why? Because so many customers ask me, Anton, is it even possible to use underfloor heating at a RAS facility? Because logic suggests that this is an effective source of heating. It's a system of pipes that give heat. They're placed under the floor, cement screed or other options. They're spread throughout the building, rooms, connected to a warm circuit, and then transfer their heat directly to the floor. I get that many of you have these underfloor heating installed in your apartments, houses, and it's widely used in everyday life. But as far as a production facility is concerned, is it good or bad in this case? Generally speaking, it's an effective source of heating. It warms the room up from the floor. All the heat goes up, then evenly heats your entire room. But underfloor heating has significant disadvantages. Let's talk about them. First of all, RAS is associated with great load on the floor. Imagine you have fish holding tanks, which are filled with water, sometimes a meter high, sometimes a meter and a half, and even up to two meters. Thus imagine that the load on the floor can be up to two tons per square meter. Firstly, your underfloor heating system can be simply crushed under such a load. And secondly, if something happens to the underfloor heating, which is under fish holding tanks, just some kind of accident, then imagine what it will take you to fix everything. You will need to stop the whole rest line operation, shut off drainage from the tanks, the floor must be damaged. It's a whole story, and there is a certain risk associated with this type of heating. Second, imagine installing RAS equipment inside a facility where the underfloor heating has already been installed. Of course, a RAS equipment installation team will to drill something to the floor, to chisel, that is a normal story, and they certainly can inadvertently damage your underfloor heating system. So, if you have already provided for this type of heating, then installers should be extremely careful and generally not to touch anything, not to drill, not to chisel. Only then they will not damage the heating system. Well, and the third significant disadvantage is that the floors of a RAS farm, especially if it's located inside a new building, an underfloor heating is usually provided for when constructing a new building. Then usually trays are laid in the floor, and inside these trays there are pipes, wastewater drainage, for example. And now imagine how all this will interfere with the installation of underfloor heating. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's likely to cause a number of inconveniences. So, to summarize everything regarding underfloor heating, it's a great option for heating a private home. But there are a number of aspects related to the production facilities, and as you have seen, that needs to be taken into consideration. If you really want to lay underfloor heating, raise all the equipment on the podiums and in general, and avoid any possible damage on the floors and heating system. Fan heaters. Honestly, I like this option the most out of all the units serving to heat the air. Why? First of all, what is a fan heater? Many of us have heard them called volcanoes. Volcano is actually a brand, a Polish one, I believe. It's a heaters manufacturer, but now everyone calls such heaters volcanoes. So you can browse that in the internet and check. What is it? This is a special unit 
inside of which there is a spiral heat transfer device. It has the same hot heating circuit as radiators do. However, the fan heater has two significant differences. The first is a temperature sensor which is hung somewhere in the room and it reads the air temperature, gives a signal to a special regulator and the regulator turns on the heater when the air temperature in the room drops below normal. That is, it adjusts the temperature automatically. Which way? When the sensor gives a signal and the fan heater turns on, a special fan inside is triggered, which in parallel with the operation of the circulating pump and the hot circuit, begins to spray air all over the room. So the fan heater just hangs on the wall without moving until your air temperature has not dropped below normal. Once it has dropped, it turns on and blows hot air all around the room and quite effectively. Afterwards, it turns off again. And instead of installing a huge number of radiators for the facility with an area of 500 square meters, or instead of laying 500 square feet of underfloor heating, which is also a significant expense, you can just install 3, 4, 5 fan heaters, which completely resolve the entire issue of air heating. And by the way, the air temperature at the fish farm should be 1 to 2 degrees above water temperature. Water temperature for each type of fish is different. I told you about that a few minutes ago. What's that important? To ensure minimal evaporation of water from fish holding tanks so that you have minimal humidity in the room and maximum durability of the building and the equipment. Thus, I've told you about the advantages of heaters. What are their drawbacks? To be honest, I haven't noticed any. If you know the disadvantages and any special aspects in the operation of fan heaters, be sure to write in the comments. I'm very interested to learn your opinion. Of course, there are other heating units. These are infrared heaters, heat curtains, fan coil. There are many of them. But why have I included only three options into my list? Because these are the most widely used heating units at rest farms in particular. Well, we've considered air heating in detail. Now we need to figure out what to do about water heating. Should we heat it at all? Should we not heat it? That's actually a typical question. I recommend heating it. And in two locations, two points. The first is the makeup water, that is, preliminary water treatment system, which provides fresh makeup water to your RAS farm. There is a special heat exchanger or heater, which heats the makeup water. So even if you suddenly refill, for example, the whole tank with fresh water, the temperature in your ass will not sag, it will continue to operate safely. If you don't heat makeup water and suddenly supply water from a borehole with a temperature of 7 degrees to your ass where sturgeons are grown, you can drop the temperature in ras by several degrees, thus your fish and biofilter will be stressed, and this is not very good. And the second heating point I recommend for water heating is the circulating water heating. You may ask, why you need this? There is air heating. There is makeup water heating. Why else should you heat water in the system? In principle, you are right, it's not necessary. But the heating of the recirculating circuit in RAS is needed for safety reasons. In the case, when suddenly the temperature of water in your system suddenly drops, a heat exchanger is turned on by temperature sensor and heats water for 1-2 degrees. Afterwards, it turns off. That's actually a kind of system stabilization, in case something goes wrong. So, I underline once again, it's not mandatory, but I always recommend to provide for such a system. And finally, let's talk about economics. This is always the most interesting thing. Let's figure out anyway, how much does it cost to hit a rare fish farm? I'll tell you right away, now experts in heating will accuse me that I'm not accurate in calculations, and they will be absolutely right. But since all of you live in different regions, all have different tasks, it's impossible to select one exact system of calculation. So, of course, we consider approximate data, but this approximate data are close enough to reality. Let's go! So, the heating of the fish farm, or rather the cost of heating, are divided into two categories. The first category is the cost of heating water. Since your farm constantly consumes fresh water, from a borehole, for example, it's cold, it must be heated. 
and the second is the heating of the building itself, heating the air. Adding up these two costs, you get the total cost of the entire heating of your farm. So let's break them down one by one. The first is water heating. In order to talk to you more specifically, I suggest to calculate based on the example of a certain farm. Let's take a sturgeon farm with a capacity of 10 tons per year. For some reason, I always get it that way. So, to grow 10 tons of sturgeon, taking into account the consumption of 300 liters of fresh water per 1 kilogram of fish, you need to supply the farm with 3000 cubic meters of fresh water. This is for the whole year, of course, as we take an annual capacity. 300 liters is a kind of average figure obtained in practice. So, 3000 cubic meters are needed to heat water from 7 degrees. This is the temperature of water from a borehole to 24 degrees Celsius, which is the maximum temperature in rice. Let's try to calculate. To heat 1 cubic meter of water by 1 degree, taking into account the heat capacity of water, we need 4.2 megajoules of heat, thus we have 3000 cubic meters. The temperature difference between 24 and 7 degrees is 17. So, 3000 cubic meters multiplied by 17 degrees and multiplied by 4.2 megajoules. Now, I will take you a calculator, and we will calculate together. 4.2 megajoules. We multiply by 17 degrees and by 3000 cubic meters of water. In total, we get around 214,000 megajoules of heat that we need to heat all the makeup water for a year to grow 10 tons of sturgeon. Let's remember this figure and move on to the next step, which is calculate the heating of the building. So, a sturgeon farm with a capacity of 10 tons of grow-out fish per year requires about 300 square meters of space. We take 300, multiplied by the average figure of 100 watts per square meter per hour required to heat the building during the heating season, multiplied by 0.1 kilowatt, multiplied by 24 hours and 180 days. It's the heating season. On average, October 15 to April 15 is the heating season in my country. So we multiply that by 3.6. What for? To convert kilowatts to megajoules. And we get 467,000 megajoules. That's the amount of heat it takes to heat a building. So we need 214,000 megajoules to heat water and 467,000 megajoules to heat the building. We take 90%. This is the efficiency of the boiler. So approximately 760,000 megajoules will be needed to heat a fish farm with a capacity of 10 tons of grout fish a year. What is 760,000 megajoules? Let's figure it out. We divide by 3.6 and get 211,000 kilowatts. Let's keep this figure in mind. It's already easy to perceive. And now, when calculating the cost of heating, depending on the fuel source, let's recall one of the previous videos. Who has not watched? Be sure to watch following the link in the description on this video, and you will understand in detail how much one kilowatt of heating costs, depending on the different fuel sources. Now let's calculate based on the data from a previous video. 211,000 kilowatts. We count starting with mains gas at the cost of one cent. This is the cost of one kilowatt. We multiply and get 2,110 US dollars. This is the annual cost of heating. Is it much or little? Well, let's deal further. The following fuel source is wood. 211,000 kilowatts. We multiply by one cent. We get 2,110 US dollars, which is practically the same as gas. So let's consider the next fuel source, pellets. 2 cents per kilowatt, you will spend 4,220 US dollars a year when heating your sturgeon farm with pellets. Coal, 2 cents per 1 kilowatt, multiplied by 211,000, we get 4,220 US dollars. You will spend this amount to heat your farm for one year if you heat with coal. Heat pumps, 2.5 cents per kilowatt. We multiply by 211,000 and we get 5,275 US dollars. 
it's already a decent figure. That's how much you pay if you hit your farm with a heat pump. A geothermal heat pump. Diesel fuel. 6 cents per 1 kilowatt. And it turns out 12,660 US dollars. Wow, this is already much more expensive than, for example, the main gas. But that's not all liquefied gas. Multiply 6 cents per kilowatt and you get 12,660 US dollars spent if you use liquefied gas. And by the way, is it good or bad? Liquefied gas is great, but very expensive in the current conditions. And the most interesting is electricity. 10 cents per 1 kilowatt multiplied by 211,000. We get almost 23,210 US dollars. It's the cost of heating farm with electricity. So if you are thinking about heating your farm with electricity, just reconcil with the cost of 23,210 US dollars. What conclusions can be drawn from these figures? Well, some kind of figures: 2,110 US dollars minimum, 23,210 US dollars maximum. How much a little is that? Let's break it down. Applies to specific number of fish grown. We have the capacity of 10 tons. All these costs can be transferred into the cost of 1 kilogram of fish. Well, let's start with the mains gas. 2110 US dollars divided by 10 tons. I don't even need a calculator to get the figure of 21 cents. The cost of heating calculated for 1 kilogram of fish. What is it? Taking into consideration the average prime cost of fish in my country is 5.5 US dollars per kilogram. It's less than 5%. That is, imagine the cost of heating in the structure of the fish prime cost in this particular case is 5%. It's probably not much. Immediate answer to the question of many people how scary heating costs are in general. If you hit with gas, everything is simple enough. The second, firewood. We've got the figure of 2,110 US dollars for firewood, which is 21 cents per kilogram of fish, which is basically almost the same 5%. The third, pellets. Dividing the cost of pellets, we get 40 cents per kilogram of fish. The cost of pellets for heating. Well, it's a little more than 5%, around 7-8%, which in principle is also not critical. Coal. Also within 40 cents per 1 kilogram of fish. Well, the next is a heat pump. 55 cents per 1 kilogram of grown fish. Well, that's 10%. All the heating sources before and above heat pump will not cause you any serious problems. But anything beyond that is going to bring you some pretty serious heating costs. I think there is no point in counting further. You can continue the calculations you have all the necessary figures. So, the conclusion is very simple. Choose the source of fuel carefully. There are always good alternatives. If you have mains gas, the whole issue is solved. If you don't have it, try using pellets. If there is no supply of pellets, your farm is located in the middle of nowhere, and it's very far and problematic to get them, select coal. Well, and as a last resort, choose a heat pump. I think these solutions cover 95% of heating issues. The general conclusion. There are many preconceptions that heating costs make almost the main part of the total RAS farm operating costs. I gave you the calculation. If I'm wrong, of course write it in the comments. I will be most happy to accept corrections, because it's important to me that this information is complete and correct. So, if you liked this video, Press the like button, subscribe to my channel, a channel about how to grow fish and make good money from it. It's Anton Pelcher. Bye.